<sighs> okay, it is time for perhaps the most important video that I've ever done. Why is it the most important? It's because it's been the longest in the making because it took me a long time to really get this stuff straight in my mind. All right. I want to talk about states of consciousness today. I learned this stuff from a variety of sources combined with my personal experience. Um, originally, it started out with reading books about social, like Social by Matt Lieberman, Balance by Matthew Seed, Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, um, The Rise of Superman, another book on flow by Stephen Kotler, um, by looking into the Flow Genome Project, by reading books on social dynamics. There's a book, Social Intelligence, by um, Daniel Goleman. Many, many, many books, okay? This is like um, an amalgam. But primarily, it's based on flow. It's based on the concept of flow. Specifically, the work done at the Flow Genome Project. Whew. Where do I start? First, let me explain that you have different areas of the brain that focus on different things. Neurons can either, well, first of all, neurons are connected to other neurons, up to 10,000 other neurons at a time. And each neuron is either excitatory or inhibitory. Excitatory neurons ping other neurons like with a spike of voltage. And that spike of voltage will turn up the likelihood that the other neuron will fire because they have a potential. And when they go over, this is the potential. If they go over that potential, they will fire. And then you have inhibitory neurons. Same thing. If they're, if they get hit by another neuron that like if an inhibitory neuron gets hit by an excitatory neuron, the inhibitory neuron will put out like a negative spike that lowers the potential. So if the potential of the other, the neuron in front of it is here, it'll go down when that neuron hits it, if that makes sense. Okay, so what this means is that the brain has like a yin and yang. It can go up and it can go down. We have receptors in our brain, um, dopamine receptors, vasopressin receptors, oxytocin receptors, serotonin receptors, all sorts of receptors. Okay, and when you have a different chemical balance in your brain, it actually changes whether or not certain neurons get excited or inhibited. So it changes the bias of a whole bunch of neurons at once. And basically it'll turn down different parts of your brain or turn up different parts of your brain. And in fact, some parts of the brain are literally, literally wired like a seesaw. The social part of your brain is wired in opposition to the logical thinking part of your brain. So when you're thinking analytically, it pushes down the social part. And when you're not thinking analytically, it does this. And similarly, um, other parts of the brain, like the amygdala, they don't always turn down other parts of the brain, but sometimes the amygdala can hijack the other part of the brain and not only turn, not even turn it down, but just completely take control of it. That was the base. Okay, that was the first basic bit that I wanted you to understand. I just realized the mic's in the shot. Whatever. Okay. This is so important. I, I feel like I'd mess it up if I stopped now and redid it. Because, you know, you know what happens. You do a video and you try to... It loses its soul when you try to redo it too many times. So, now that I've explained, like, the excitatory, inhibitory, the ups and downs, just how generally that whole system works, there are four levels of consciousness you do have different emotional moods, like you have like a happy mood, you have like an angry mood, you have like a, a bad mood and a good mood in the sense like you've, like say, say you have social anxiety sometimes, but not other times, you have different moods and different states that your brain can be in. This is related to those hormone levels and certain stimuli you have can turn certain neurons up or down. It's just this whole big complex network. And it's quite amazing really how the brain works. It really is. So... Um, since I don't have an editing program, I'll try to use my hands here. Level one, level two, level three, level four. Okay, four main levels. Level one of the brain, um, a little, like a general state level one, is when you're like say frazzled or you're anxious, 
and your anxiety is hijacking the rest of your brain. So you, you can't think, you, you know, you can't focus on anything. And the way I want to explain these four levels is through an analogy. Um, when you're in level one, when you're frazzled, you can't focus on much and your, your mind's kind of shut down. So the way I would, I would explain it is that at level one, you have a little bit of awareness, like um, in your reality, like everything that's around you at any moment, anytime, this is happening continuously, every moment of the day, whether you're asleep, awake, this is happening. You, you're in one level of the other. Sleep is its own state and it has its own effects, okay? Level one, thanks to the anxiety state, um, your amygdala forces you to focus on your selective attention. This is what's key here. Your selective attention is forced to focus on whatever the amygdala has detected as a threat or as being important. So if you are public speaking for the first time and your amygdala is freaking out, you will often be in level one. That's when you choke. And in level one, it's like, oh, where are the words come from? Where did they come from? Where did they go? They're gone because you're in level one. I will, I will try. I will explain in a little bit how to get out of level one and get to the higher states briefly. But first, let me finish this. So level one, it's like your, your selective attention, your ability to focus on the world is this big. Level two is when you're in a logical state and it's like you have this much available to you, this much of your reality available. So in level one, you can only focus on this or this. In level, one, in level two, you can, like, you can do math problems, you can think. You're kind of aware of your environment, but it's still kind of selective. And you have all of these things happening at once. Level three, I had a thought, I'm going to explain that in a minute. Level three is the flow state. And this is like, if level one was like this and level two is like this, level three is like you have this much information available to you. I will explain what I mean by that in a second. And finally, there's level four, which is... Well, and by the way, in level three, you do have this much information available to you, but it's like you're not controlling it. So it's just kind of like you're following the flow of the situation. You're not logically controlling it. Okay. And level four is about three times as much information available as level three, I believe. That's that's correct. If you look at the Flow Genome Project, they talk about that. So level four is like your ability to process all of this information. But not only that, you're able to control the flow as you do it. This, this is what's key. So you're able to control the flow of information as you do it. Okay, so those are the four main levels. That's like the general premise of this video is that you have different levels that you can access and different amounts of reality that you can access. It's kind of like you're, you're far from reality in one state and you're like tunnel visioned and you're focused in one state. And it's like your selective focus has different feelers. Now, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if, when I talk about information, at any given time, you have different levels of the brain, and all information hits your brain, and you have neurons in your brain that keep your brain, um, they, they, they t like, you ha take an information like from your vision, from your hearing, from your sense of touch, from your inner emotions, and at any given time, your brain is always pinging the environment, or pinging yourself, to see kind of like what state you're in and it'll turn up different parts of the brain depending on that. Now, at the same time, um, let's say you see a bear. This is a good example. You see a bear in a, in a non-dangerous context. That bear, it's like, whoa, there's a bear. Your amygdala is connected to your eyes and it'll freak out, but because you logically understand that the bear is a uh, is you know it's barricaded it's safe it's in a zoo or whatever you're like okay or if you're watching a movie if the train is coming you on the screen you're like oh no a train your amygdala is like that and that's why you feel the fear of the movie but logically you're like oh, okay that's not real you see so um what happens is in level one that information is hijacked by the amygdala and it forces you to act on the primal side of things because we're wired for survival first of all we're not wired to have this crazy civilization around us okay now level two you expand the awareness and more of the information of your environment is in, is available for you to process so let's use since 
some, one of the most complex things we do as humans is socialize. So I'll use this as an example. If I'm walking into a room and let's say there's some people standing in there, instantaneously my brain will, um, even like without me consciously recognize what's going on, my eyes will be like person, 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 depending, this is what I'm getting leading up to is depending on the state you're in, um, what you do, this is the whole point of this video, depending on the state you're in, what's going on unconsciously changes. And as you're in a higher state, you are able to control what's happening. That's the whole premise of this video. Okay. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's good explanation. I'm glad I came up with that on the spot. Yes. So, and as you're walking into a room, you see like a girl there and you see that she's facing this way and this other girl's facing this way. Um, remember, like I said, you may not consciously even notice this. You notice that this girl's eyes are, are steady and this other girl is like doing this or, or some guy is like looking like this at the girl, you know, like if there's some attraction going on or the girl is looking like this at the guy, like very subtly. And your brain is taking all this information and like, oh, is she doing it this way and this? And it's, it also takes information like the shape of the room and it forms like a, an unconscious spatial map of the room, if you will. And so um, the higher the state of consciousness you're in, the more aware you can be of what's going on, although maybe not logically aware to where you could explain it with words. But like at level one, you're operating on the immediate impulse. Um, at level one, you're going to be pinging the environment heavily. So you'd be like, girl, 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 girl. And what's interesting is that by doing this, you also, other people are pinging you as well. And so their brains are unconsciously kind of feeling out the environment continuously as they do stuff. And like, if, let's say you're driving and you're just like, dude, hum, dee, dum, dee, dum, dee, dum. And suddenly out of nowhere, there's this loud noise. You're gonna be like, whoa, what's going on? And your amygdala is going to like hijack you momentarily. And you'll like just automatically knee jerk like that. And uh, you'll notice okay, it's just um, a guy hit a drum or something, you know? And unless it is a car crash, then you're like, then you will also automatically like brake really hard or do whatever like your instinctive driving pattern is because your amygdala is taking control. And that's a good thing. We want our brains to focus for us in dangerous situations. But here's the thing. In level two, suddenly um, you're the way you move your eyes changes. Okay. And when you walk into that room with the people in it, you're aware, but you're not acting instinctively. You're like, Oh, I'm in control of the situation. Now I can logically decide to talk to this person. I can logically decide to go lift the weight. If you're in a gym or I can logically decide to walk up on stage. If you're the public speaker. <sighs> yeah. So that's sort of like what you have a tiny bit of control in level one, but it's very little, just tiny. It's like fight, flight, freeze. You know, you can either freeze up and be shy and not talk to anyone. Level one, that's often what happens or what used to happen to me a lot. And it still happens if I get in level one, I tend to get shy and not talk. Um, or you can flee. So you can like try to evade the situation, get out, avoid people. Let's see, fight, fight. <laughs> um, if you somehow determine that it's dangerous, um, you might get all angry and start being aggressive with someone or you may possibly like learn how to channel that that primal energy into lifting a weight if you're in the gym or if you're public speaking you kind of know how to channel that nervous energy but ideally you want to be in one of the higher states okay so i talked about level one level two see we are 13 and a half minutes in level three is like um how do i put this you're in a flow state, so you're no longer you're no longer operating from your amygdala. You're no longer making conscious decisions about what's going on, but you're very aware of what's going on. Okay, this is what's which is key here. You're aware of it, but um, in a flow state, you're just kind of in your own lane. Let's put it this way. And so when you walk into this room, same situation. You you don't even ping the people because you're like, I'm safe, I'm fine, and you might unconsciously take in what's happening, but your brain is not like, Oh, is there a threat? Because the lower the state you are, the more you're looking for threats, the more you're like trying to figure out what's going on. But as you're in a higher state, it's like, Oh, I know what's going on. And often flow states will happen whenever you've been in a situation thousands of times. And they can even happen in the first time. If the situation has the right conditions. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go into that in this video, but if you want to understand that better, that specific thing, read the rise of Superman by Stephen Collar, great book on that specific aspect of things like getting into new situations and using a flow state to make you just make amazing decisions without even trying to 
super cool, super cool. So yeah, in level three, since you're because of because you're not using your resources to look for threats, your awareness is expanded, and at a given moment, instead of say pinging everyone. Um, what happens is they will ping you and they'll say, oh, he's in a flow state. This guy's cool. He's, he's bringing the party as weird as that sounds. And you really have to get this, like, this is really screws with my brain every time it happens, but you have to really like have this happen to you to understand what, what I'm even saying when I say people, unless you can remember experiences you've had where people sort of ping you and they're like looking at you and then they like sort they assess you and you're like hey what's up and they talk to you and if you're in a flow state then you just talk to them and it's just like just part of the plan everything's just happening and it's super cool which is what socializing should be like if you get into a deep conversation with someone you will naturally fall into a flow state and then finally this is this is my favorite part level four where your awareness goes from big to huge and from there it's like you're you're in a deep deep trance and it's like um I don't, I don't even know how to explain this like so you walk in and the people are in the room but not only do you do they ping you but it's like uh, one thing i should explain first is that in your brain there's something called proto conversation like when a mother talks to her baby she's like hey, hey and the baby's like he and then the baby kind of pulls away and they do this little body language dance with each other well, in the same way, you do this with people all the time. That's kind of what I mean by pinging. When you're in a level four state and you walk into that room, you, it's like there's this magic that happens where people feel that you're in a high level state, like that you're, you're dominating the moment, okay? Super cool, super amazing. Like this is just like so cool when you really understand what I mean by this and how to apply this in your daily life. Like right now, I would say I'm at a level three and I've been kind of flipping into level four at times during this conversation, but just for like literally like one second at a time, most of the time I've been at level three, I'm kind of flipping into level two now. Um, yes, and you can learn how to be aware of what state you're in, which is another thing entirely. But anyway, so yeah, you walk in a level four, you kind of ping these people and not only do they say hi, but they, they might even run over to you and give you a hug, even if they're complete strangers. This is what's crazy. Like you will literally walk up to people and give them a hug. And this doesn't just apply to social situations, but it can happen more often because of the complexity. High complexity situations are necessary to get into higher states be because um, your brain is a miser, okay? So you kind of go down to the lowest state possible. When you go up to this high state, um, yeah, people will just hug you. You'll like dominate the environment. You'll just have a lot of fun with everybody. You'll even improve everyone's mood. Um, if it's a gym, suddenly everyone gets 10% stronger, as weird as that sounds. You'll, you'll be physically stronger. Um, it's like you're on top of the world, almost. And um, to that's basically the gist of it. And I could explain a lot more stuff. I will just, you know, just kind of give you a better idea. What's going on in a flow state is your brain is releasing, like, dopamine, serotonin, whatever other chemicals, like several chemicals. And it's like this mixture of chemicals, drugs, neurotransmitters in your brain that hit all these receptor sites I talked about earlier. And it sort of flips your brain into a certain state and it expands the way the neurons communicate with each other into this super flowy kind of, it just happened state. The thing about flow states is that they just kind of happen. And you can experience them happening. And then after you're, afterwards, you're like, whoa, that that's kind of cool. Because it's so, it's, Oftentimes in a flow state, it's a flow state because it's so far, it's like you've never done it before, but at the same time, you've been preparing it for it your whole life, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's the gist of it. So what does this mean that you can have different levels of awareness? And this is kind of what meditation is, is trains you to do is it helps you learn how to get out of this and get into this, this expansive state of mind where your brain is firing on all cylinders and you're operating in tune with your environment. And it's just like this great dance that happens unconsciously. Well, geez. How about this? If you want me to cover more about how you can get into these states, leave a comment below and kind of tell me like what, what questions you have. Um, if this made sense, if it didn't, let me know and like 
maybe I can redo this in a way that makes more sense to you because I've never really explained, I've explained this a few times to people and they think it's really interesting, but let me know. Okay. Uh, maybe you want more stories. Maybe I'm talking too fast. Maybe my energy's too crazy. I just left the gym. You know, that's just kind of the mood I'm in at the moment. Yeah. Super, super interesting. Like my mind is like, wow, wow. I'll leave you with this comment. We have what's called a happiness set point. So it's like the baseline happiness levels that you have in your life. The higher the level that you tend to be in, the more it will raise your baseline level of happiness. So the more time you spend at level one and anxiety, it'll plummet you into depression. And the more time you spend at say level three or level four, it'll increase your baseline happiness over a period of time as your brain rewires. Hope you liked it, guys. I'm really glad that it, this kind of came together. Um, I feel like I, I explained it pretty well, but like I said, let me know. Peace.